Welcome to this video about basic combinatorics and the hypergeometric distribution. In this video, we will look at permutations with or without replacement, as well as combinations without replacement. At the end of this video, we will have a look at the hypergeometric distribution. The word combination is used when we do not care about the order of things, whereas the word permutation is used when the order of things matters. As an example, we here have a box with four balls. We will now draw four balls with replacement. This means that we draw a ball and store its number here. And then we put it back or replace it with an identical ball. Then we draw a new ball and a new. Note that since we put the balls back in a box, it is possible to draw the same ball several times. Finally, we happen to draw ball number 4. So, how many possible sequences of numbers can we get if we draw 4 balls? This is one sequence. And this is another. There are a lot of permutations. These are just a few. The total number of possible permutations can be calculated as k to the power n, where k is the total number we can choose from which is 4 in our example, since we have 4 balls in a box with different numbers. And n is number of balls we select. Since we select 4 balls, n is also equal to 4 in this example. If we plug in the numbers and do the math, we see that we can create 256 unique sequences or permutations. So, what is the number of permutations if we do not allow for replacement? As an example, we here have the same box with the same 4 balls. We will now draw 4 balls without replacement. This means that when we draw a ball, we do not put it back or replace it with an identical ball. When we choose the second ball, there are now only 3 balls left in the box. We then continue to draw the balls until there are no balls left in the box. For example, this might be one example of an unique sequence. Note that each number can now only appear once in the sequence, because we cannot draw the same ball several times. If you select four balls again from the box, we might get the following sequence. This is another unique sequence, and this is another one, and so forth. The balls can actually be arranged in 24 different ways. In other words, the total number of permutations is 24. The number of possible permutations can be calculated like this. Because when we take the first ball, we have 4 balls to select from. And when we take the second ball, we only have 3 balls left to select. And when we take the third ball, we only have 2 balls to select. And so forth. The product of these numbers is 24. This type of sequence is usually denoted like this, which is called the factorial of n. The factorial of n is calculated as the product of integer numbers from 1 to n. For example, if you set n to 4, this means that we should calculate the product of the numbers 1 to 4. Note that 0 factorial is equal to 1. We'll now have a look at another example in this case, we have a box with the same 4 balls as in our previous example, but we will only select 2 out of the 4 balls. We will therefore randomly draw 2 balls without replacement. We first choose one random ball from the box, and then select a second ball out of the 3 balls that are left in the box. This is one set of arrangement that can be obtained. So, how many possible permutations can we get if we now choose 2 out of the 4 balls? It might happen that we first select ball number 1 and then ball number 3. Or that we first select ball number 3 and then ball number 1. It is actually possible to get 12 unique sequences of numbers or permutations if we choose 2 balls out of 4. The total number of permutations can be calculated by the following formula where we choose k balls without replacement, out of n possible. 
Let's plug in our numbers based on our example where we select 2 out of the 4 balls. If we set n to 4 and k to 2, we should calculate the factorial of 4 and the factorial of 2. We can cancel these numbers so that we are left with 4 times 3, which is equal to 12. This means that we can have 12 possible unique sets of numbers or permutations when we draw two balls out of four possible. The probability of first drawing ball number four and then ball number one is therefore simply one over 12 because there are in total 12 possible ways to pick the first two balls in the box. This can also be calculated as a sequence of probabilities where the probability to select ball number four in the first draw is one over four because there are four balls in the box. The chance to select ball number one after we have taken out one of the other balls is one over three because there are three balls left to choose from. The probability that we first select ball number four and then ball number one is therefore one over 12. So, how many combinations of balls can we get if we draw two out of four balls? Since we now use the word combinations, we no longer care about the order of the numbers. For example, what is the chance to select ball number 1 and 4 if we do not care about the order? When we do not care about the order, we use the word combinations instead of permutations. Both these sequences of numbers will work, because it does not matter if we first select ball number 1 or 4. Since two permutations out of the 12 possible will result in that we pick ball number 1 and 4, the probability to get these two balls is 2 over 12. Let's focus on only the six possible combinations where we do not care about the order. For example, it does not matter if we first draw ball number 1 and then ball number 2. If we draw two balls from a box with four balls without replacement, it is possible to get these six combinations. The number of possible combinations if we draw k balls out of n possible without replacement can be calculated by the following formula. What is new in this equation is that the factorial of k has been added in a denominator compared to our previous equation in order to adjust for the fact that we no longer care about the order of the numbers. This is usually pronounced n choose k which in our case means that we have n balls and we like to choose k. In our example, n is equal to 4 and k is equal to 2. If we do the math, we see that there are 6 combinations or 6 possible pairs of balls that can be drawn when the order does not matter. We can now for example calculate the probability to get 2 orange balls. Since only 1, out of the six possible pairs include two orange balls. The probability to draw two orange balls is one over six. The probability to draw an orange ball in the first draw should be 50% because in the first draw there are two orange balls and two green balls. In the second draw there is one orange ball out of the three balls that are left. The probability to draw balls with a certain color can be calculated by the following formula, which is used to define the hypergeometric distribution. n is the total number of balls we have in a box, which is 4 in our example. k is the number of orange balls in the box. And n minus k is therefore the number of green balls in the box. Little n is the sample size, which is the number of balls we will select without replacement. Little k is the number of orange balls to be drawn. If we like to calculate the probability to draw two orange balls when we draw two balls, little k should therefore be set to 2. Little n minus little k is therefore the number of green balls to be drawn. Since we should calculate the probability to draw two orange balls, the number of green balls to be drawn should be equal to 0. Note that k cannot be bigger than n because it would for example be impossible to draw three orange balls if we only draw two balls. Let's plug in our numbers. 4 choose 2 is equal to 6. The denominator 
therefore tells us the number of combinations that are possible. The numerator gives us the number of possible combinations to draw two orange balls. If we plug in the numbers from the calculations, we see that the probability to draw two orange balls is 1 over 6. If we instead would like to calculate the probability to draw one orange ball and one green ball, we set little k to 1. We see that the probability is 4 over 6, which seems reasonable because there are four possible ways to draw two balls with different colors. Finally, we can calculate the probability to get no orange balls, which in this case would be equal to drawing only green balls. Based on these probabilities, we can create the so-called hypergeometric distribution, which shows the probability for all possible values of k, which corresponds to that we select 0, 1 or 2 orange balls from the box. Let's have a look at another example, where we now have 7 orange balls and 6 green balls. Suppose that we draw 7 balls without replacement. So, what is the probability to draw 6 orange balls and 1 green ball? This is one example of a combination of 6 orange and 1 green ball. This is another. And another. Note that there are 7 possible ways to pick the 6 orange balls, when we do not care about the order. Since the single green ball can be any of the 6 green balls, for example ball number 8, or ball number 9, it makes sense that the total number of ways we can select 6 orange balls and 1 green ball is 7 times 6. The total number of possible combinations when we select 7 balls out of 13 is 1716. The probability to select 6 orange balls out of 7 is therefore about 2.4%. The hypergeometric distribution for this example looks like this. The height of this bar corresponds to the probability that the 7 balls we select include 6 orange balls. For example, the probability to select 3 orange balls out of 7 possible is about 30%. By the way, note that we can use the hypergeometric distribution to calculate the probability to win the lottery. We can see the orange balls as winning balls. For example, the chance to select only orange balls, which may correspond to choosing balls 1 to 7 from a box with 35 different balls. It's only about 1 in 6.7 million. This was the end of this video about basic combinatorics and the hypergeometric distribution. In the next lecture, we will see how the hypergeometric distribution is used by Fisher's test to calculate the exact p value. Thanks for watching.